Hello and welcome to our online service for August 21st and 22nd, uh, the 13th Sunday after Pentecost from Pinnacle Lutheran Church in Rochester, New York. Again, just a reminder that you can find all of our services as well as a daily devotion on our website at pinnaclelutheran.org. Our opening hymn today is number 611, Chief of Sinners, Though I Be. Please pause the service video and click the hymn link below. And we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house. And the place place where your glory dwells. Lord, restore the fortunes of your people. Let Let all your people people rejoice and be glad. From generation to generation, you are our God. Your Your words shall shall be heard heard among our children children and our children's children. Let us ever share the joys of Jesus. Let us spread his grace and love to all the nations. Indeed, it is good to be here, worshiping the Lord and receiving his gifts for our forgiveness, our life, and our salvation. Yet we must admit that there have been times when we have taken God for granted. There have been times when we have created our own religious, political, and social traditions and we have given those human-made traditions more attention than we have Jesus. Still, our Heavenly Father invites us to come to Him and to ask for forgiveness. Let me pause for a moment. Heavenly Father, We confess that we have not always looked to you you for all good. We have created idols for ourselves. We confess our sins of thought, word, and deed. Forgive us, Father, for these weak failures. Renew us and lead us so that we follow you and look to you for all good. For the sake of Jesus. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. And because of Jesus, forgive you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We are forgiven in Christ. Christ. He He is is our our true inheritance inheritance forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Our service continues with our psalm, which we'll read responsibly. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They do abominable deeds. There is none who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on the children of man to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. They have all turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. There is none who does good, not even one. Have they no knowledge? All the evildoers who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon the Lord. There they are in great terror, for God is with the generation of the righteous. You would shame the plans of the poor, but the Lord is his refuge. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, let Jacob rejoice, let Israel be glad. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace in our hearts and calm in our nation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace among nations, growth in the church, unity of faith, and proclamation among all believers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves, gathered here and all who join us wherever they are, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us in our weakness, comfort us in setbacks, and defend us from evil, from all evil, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And also also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are one who is greater than any earthly temple. Strengthen us as we pass on the faith to our families and neighbors so that we may not pass on mere preferences, but the full potency of you, our Lord and our Savior. 
For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our service continues with our readings. <clears throat> our Old Testament reading this week comes from the 29th chapter of the book of Isaiah. The vision of all this has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed. When men give it to one who can read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And when they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot read. And the Lord said, because this people draw near me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men, therefore behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people, with wonder upon wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. Ah, you who hide deep from the Lord your counsel, whose deeds are in the dark, and who say, who sees us? Who knows? You turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay that the thing made should say of its maker, he did not make me? Or the thing formed say of him who formed it, he has no understanding? Is it not yet a very little while until Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field and the fruitful field shall be regarded as a forest? In that day, the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of their gloom and darkness, the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the poor among mankind shall exult in the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. And you're invited to read the gradual together. Fear, Fear the, the Lord, Lord you, you his saints. saints. For those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. And our epistle lesson comes from the fifth chapter of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Now, as a church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ in the church. However, <clears throat> let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And we read the Alleluia verse, to, the verse together. Alleluia. Alleluia. Your, your words, words were found, found and, I and I ate, ate them. them. And, and your, your words became, became to me a joy, a joy and, the, and delight the delight of my, of my heart. heart. Alleluia. And the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees gathered to Jesus with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And when the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, 
Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written. This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of man. And he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your own tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if a man tells his father or his mother, whatever you would have gained from me is Corban, that is, given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and many such things you do. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. Our hymn of the day today is The Church is One Foundation. Please pause the service video and click the hymn link below. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as I look at the readings this week, especially our Old Testament and our Gospel lesson, there's a real confluence between the two of them. And we're reminded that church history, and really human history, is full of examples of groups and communities that have confused their man-made traditions with divine revelation. And in many ways, even in our own tradition, in the in the Lutheran tradition, the Reformation tradition, the Reformation of 500 years ago was in many ways fought along the lines of tradition versus divine revelation because much of what the medieval and even to an extent the modern day Roman Catholic Church practices and believes comes out of tradition rather than divine revelation. And so another example that occurred to me this week was the Shaker community, the same community that brought us the shaker furniture and shaker style of of cabinet making and such like that, the shakers, which came out of the Quaker movement back in the 18th century, um, believed that they were following the Bible. They were very conservative. They taught that everybody could find God within him or herself rather than through the use of clergy or with rituals, and that their lives would be dedicated to pursuing perfection and continuously confessing their sins and attempting to cease from sinning. And none of that really is all that earth-shaking. I mean, it might be a little different from community to community, but by and large, that's pretty close to general Christian tradition. However, what was different about the Shakers is that they also believed that members of their church had to lead celibate lives. So husbands and wives had to be celibate. If you weren't married before you became a Shaker, you didn't get married. The only way that the Shaker community grew was by adoption from adopting other children or by conversion. So consequently, by 2017, there were only two Shakers remaining in the entire Shaker movement, and they were living in the last Shaker community that exists. But what is it? What is it about humans that we hold so tightly to what we become used to that we can't let it go? Even when we can look at what we're doing, that we can look at the traditions that we're holding and realize that there's no future in them. Why are we so apt to confuse divine truth with our own, which can't be compromised, with our own traditions, which may well have been very good when they started, but need to be updated in order to, um, in order to relate to more modern needs. And that's what we see in our Old Testament and our gospel lesson today the tendency of human tradition to replace divine revelation. Our Old Testament lesson comes from Isaiah. And this part of Isaiah, chapter 29, is a prophecy given to Isaiah by the Lord, and it's forward-looking. It's looking about 200 years into the future at a time when Jerusalem is going to fall to the Babylonian Empire for their faithlessness. And Isaiah reports that at the time, 200 years from that time, though it was already developing at his time, But certainly by 200 years into the future, there was going to be widespread ignorance of Isaiah's message. There was going to be widespread ignorance of the Word of God. 
And this is what he writes in our lesson. And the vision of all this, that is his message, what, what he's writing, has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed. When men give it to one who can read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. In, the place, of committing himself, in place of committing themselves to the word of God, the Israelites had built up holy-sounding tradition. And so and that's, again, our Lord's critique in the very next verse. Because this people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men. Israel was going to, was going to seek to keep a religious veneer over their practice. They were going to maintain, they were going to try to maintain the forms and traditions of, their, of what had been given to them in the covenants by God, and yet they were going to strip it of all meaning. It was just going to be empty ritual. In fact, <clears throat> if you listen to the Lord's critique earlier in the book of Isaiah, way back in the, in the first chapter, that's actually how the Lord begins the book of Isaiah. He says, what to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord? I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of well-fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required this of you, this trampling of my courts? Bring no more vain offerings. Incense is an abomination to me. I cannot endure iniquity and solemn assembly. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, Remove the evil of your deeds from before your eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Correct oppression. Bring justice to the fatherless. Plead the widow's cause. Israel had gutted everything that was important in the law. And remember, the law is all about love. Love first for the Lord and love for the neighbor. And that love is expressed in service. And so they retained the form of religion, the tradition of religion, but had gutted it of all that it was meant to do. And we see the same thing in our gospel lesson. This is the same critique that Jesus uses against the Pharisees who were criticizing Jesus' disciples for eating with one unwashed hands, which was a tradition that had been handed down to them over the generations. So as Mark tells us, the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands properly holding to the tradition of the elders. Now, this was an ongoing point of contention throughout Jesus' ministry between Jesus and the religious leaders of Israel. What place does tradition have alongside divine revelation? How do they relate to one another? Which one has precedence? Which one um, should be looked at first? And the religious leaders had effectively used their tradition not only to solidify their place in society, but they were also using it like a weapon to cut off people that they deemed unworthy to be in a temple or to be in part of religious worship, and they used their religious tradition to cut off people that they didn't want to have in their assemblies. And that's what Jesus criticized them for at another place. This was in Matthew. He says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe your mint and dill and cumin, and you have neglected the weightier matters of the law justice, mercy, faithfulness. You ought to have done the former without neglecting the latter. And so we can use, we can use all of us as humans, whether it's the Pharisees and the religious leaders of Israel or the people back in Isaiah's day or even us today, we can all use holy sounding tradition to codify and fossilize what feels right to us without regard for what God's word really says. And our tradition can get in the way of people really getting to know who God is and what he, do, what he has done for us. It, gets, it prevents us from knowing God's word. And that goes for both those inside the church and those outside the church. For those who are inside the church, sometimes our long-held traditions, can, which don't come out of God's word, um, if we hold to those, we are sometimes more likely to have a skewed understanding of who God is and what it means to be in relationship with him. For those who are outside of the church, that creates one more impediment to them coming into relationship with our Lord. And it can be used by us inside the church as a way to keep them out, 
just as the Pharisees were doing in Jesus' day with their tradition. And Paul has this to say about anything that obscures our right understanding of who Christ is and what he has done and the freedom that we have because of him. Paul says in Colossians 2, see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world and not according to Christ. Let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food or drink or with regard to a festival or a new moon or Sabbath. These things are a shadow of the things that are to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. These have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-made religion and asceticism and severity to the body, but they are of no value. Paul was saying anything that we hold as tradition, holy tradition, apart from the essence, which is Christ, is, val- is of no value because, again, it obscures our right understanding of who Christ is and what he has done and what it means to be in relationship with him. And so the substance is Christ. He has fulfilled the law with all of its temple worship and regulations so that we would be free. Our sins are forgiven through Christ's sacrifice alone, not by the traditions that we follow, no matter how holy they might sound to us or how holy they might appear to the rest of the world. And don't get me wrong, tradition itself is not a bad thing, as long as it is in accord with God's Word and it is secondary to God's Word. God's Word, God's clear Word, always has precedence over tradition. And tradition is always to be judged by what God's Word has to say. Tradition is changeable, whereas God's word is not. And so I ask you, my brothers and sisters, as we are here in 2021, what quote-unquote necessary traditions are we holding on to that may have outlived their usefulness? What do we do that may, that may need some reevaluation? Are there certain service types? Are there certain service times? Are there are, are our hymnals? even ordained by God, or are are these things merely traditions? What practices are we holding on to that may be comfortable for us and makes the church what we would like it to be, but are keeping a new generation out of the church because it doesn't relate? Must I wear an alb? Do I always have to have a collar on? Do we burn two candles for communion, one candle for non-communion? Must must you and I genuflect, that is, bow every time we approach the altar or every time we walk from the right side of the altar to the left side of the altar? Do we have to say, this is the word of the Lord every time we, we have a reading? Do we have to say, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit after we're done with a psalm? The answer to these and a host of other questions is no. No, these are all traditions. These are all practices. These are all customs that aren't mandated in Scripture for sure and aren't found in our confessions. That is the Book of Concord either. These are traditions of men that we too easily confuse for the truth of God. My brothers and sisters, COVID has given us an unprecedented opportunity to evaluate and reevaluate why we do what we do because so many of the practices that we have brought to this point have had to be placed on hold. There have been good changes that have occurred over the past year. Yes, there's been a lot of things that have have had to be put on hold, but some good has come out of the challenges that we have faced during COVID. Things that I think have made our church more approachable for those who are new to our church. We're now using service bulletins rather than using the hymnal, um, which makes it much easier, I can tell you, for people who are coming to be guests in our church and who are unfamiliar with the hymnal. We're now recording our service, which we had never done before. Not only is that good for the people who have not been able to attend because of COVID, but that's opened up an entirely new range of offering our service to people, members of our congregation who have never been able to come because of health concerns, who are now able to receive the service and feel that they are a part of our church community. And of course, our services are now available to anyone across the globe who has access to the internet. And so my brothers and sisters, I ask, do we want to be like the Pharisees that Christ confronted in our gospel lesson? Do we want to be the church that says, when you look like us, when you talk like us, when you act like us, then we'll accept you. But 
you must uphold our traditions in order to be a part of us. The church has only one mandate, and one mandate alone from our Lord, and he gave it in a great commission. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Let us continue to have the courage to examine who we are and what we do for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of Christ, and not for our own sake, not for our own personal likes and dislikes, that in everything, what we do, would, its substance would be Christ and his truth and not man-made tradition. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit keep your hearts and minds in faith to life everlasting. Amen. Our service continues today with, our, with the creed. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed as they are printed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not, not made, being of one substance with the Father, Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and, and was made man and, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, heaven and sits at the right hand, hand of the Father. And, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. And let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would preserve us from rejecting your commandments for the doctrines of men. By your Spirit's aid, we pray that you would lead all Christians to keep your commandments in thought, word, and deed, honoring you in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are known, grant us a true faith that we would honor you not only with our lips, but serve you faithfully with all of our heart, mind, and our strength. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we pray that you would give joy and hope to all of your children in remembrance of their baptism that they may rejoice in the forgiveness of sins that Christ freely pours out in this saving flood. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of life, guide and lead those facing difficult life and death decisions to make God-pleasing decisions, affirming that life is a precious gift from you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Lord, hear our prayers for our nation and its leaders and for all civil servants and for those who work whose work imperils them for the sake of their neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Lord of life, encourage with your word and grace all who suffer physically, emotionally, and spiritually on account of illness or danger. Lord, we include all those we list on our prayer list. Lord, all those who are suffering in Afghan from the uh, turmoil in Afghanistan and all those who are suffering in Haiti and all those who are before you in our hearts. Lord, that you would bless all medical professionals with the skills necessary to give relief and care to their pain where possible. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, we pray that you would defend your church from all false teaching and error, that your faithful people may confess you to be the only true God, and that they would rejoice in your gifts of life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you, the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our closing hymn today is Forth in Thy Name, O Lord I Go. Please pause the service video and click the hymn link below. <laughs>